But let's get to our main point, which is how to channel the energy that you obtain from accepting the principles of liberty. And I think we can go around and speak that once we first heard, once we first really jumped in the pool, not stuck our toe in, but jumped completely in the pool for liberty, for freedom, for actual freedom, not uh, 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 Uncle Sam freedom, but uh, <laughs> real, true, I own myself freedom. I think all of us probably went through an early phase, and this is the, the core of this, this episode is going to be on that early phase of how to handle yourself when sharing the principles of liberty. And I just, you know, want Jeremy to speak on what, you know, some of maybe some of the uh, mistakes he made early in, in his transition and then Danello, and then I, I'll, 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 I will share some examples and then we can, ref we can, we can go from there. But uh, so Jeremy, what were the, some of the major things you, looking back now? It's like, oh, I was so dumb. What were some of those things that you, you know, like go a little bit, I know we covered it last episode, but go a little bit through like that early period of transition where you were minarchist and like the next week you were, you were full on voluntarist and how you treated people. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I, I started to, to talk about this a little bit last week, you're right. Um, for me at the beginning, and uh, I'll also say that the, the, the reason we were talk the reason we wanted to talk about this is because talking amongst ourselves um, and with a few other people, uh, we've noticed, I, you know, I noticed as well, you know, I noticed the trend with the new, the, the newer comers, the newcomers to the, to the, you know, movement or movement as I like to call it. Um, they, uh, the, that fire that's there and, and you just want to shake everybody and you want to tell them and you, and you don't, and, and when they don't get it right away, you don't understand because you finally understand. Um, there, there's a tendency for people to be extremely angry with good reason, but they're the out, the way they get it out of their system is not exactly appropriate, shall we say. Um, I, I went through that. I went through my own period with that where, where it, it really was that drastic, where I started out, um, as, as I mentioned last week, there was I, I, I went through the the, tip, the the typical six to eight month transition uh, from minarchism to, to anarchism, and as I got closer and closer, the last the last thing for me to let go, which is also a lot of people we were, were just talking about with the military, that was the, the hardest thing for me to get over. Um, but what I finally did, because for me. It was actually reading uh, Chaos Theory by uh, Robert Murphy uh, would put me over Great. the edge with, with understanding. That that was that was my you know you were saying you know you woke up one week one week you were a minarchist and the next week you woke up a voluntarist. That's pretty much how my overnight transition at the very end happened by reading that that little book. And uh, as 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 soon as I woke up that day and, and realized that you know this was the path I was going to be on, I started reading more and more and more. And I just started blurting it out whenever the opportunity arose, whether it was when I was talking to my friends and family, uh, whether I was on social media, um, even I had to re really restrain myself with my clients a lot of the times if they would bring certain things up. But I just, it was, it was overkill because I would just, I would beat them over the head with it. And I wouldn't, I was telling, I wasn't, I, I was lecturing. I wasn't. You were really, starting fires. <laughs> yes, exactly. I, I I wanted, and I was mad when people didn't understand. And and I, you know, I went through the typical phase with a lot of people, like, you know, with the name calling and calling everybody sheep and and saying, oh, you just don't get it, and you're so, and and using uh, even the word status uh, as an insult instead of just what the word it actually the way I use it these days when it just means it means somebody who to me it means somebody who believes government is necessary on some level. But I was hurling it around like an insult and just yelling at everybody and saying, why don't you get this? And I all, and I was so incensed that I wasn't even I wasn't even reading everything I, that was coming across to me super carefully. So I was falling for more conspiracy theories than I used to and just running with it because I was like, oh, governments, 
horrible. I, I figured out all these things, how horrible government is. And as soon as I heard a story, oh, it's got to be true because of government. And they must have done it. Um, and I would just yell because it was actually, unfortunately, right around uh, when Sandy Hook happened. Um, and I almost got really swallowed up in that uh, because all these people that I had just met and and we're espousing all these other ideas that you know a voluntary you know volunteerism and all this stuff that made sense to me. They were all caught up in things like that, and I almost I almost got really bad with that and telling every you know trying to tell everybody, oh, it's a lie, it's a lie, everything's a lie, it, it never happened. And I and luckily I caught myself early early enough and said, well, that I can't be like this. Uh, but I still I, I alienated a lot of my friends and family uh, just by constantly beating everybody over the head. Uh, I drove my wife nuts. Um, she, uh, <laughs> when I finally calmed down, is when she she got on the the kick that you know you talked about last week about you know people thinking you're going through a phase. Um, when I fi- when I finally slowed down with the with the rhetoric, uh, that's when she that's when she actually said that to me one day that she thought that I was just I just been going through a phase and she was ready for it to be over. <laughs> um, and I tr- had to explain to her that no, I I just. I was a little too overexcited, and now I'm going to sit back a little bit. And 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 as I said last week, not, now I try to ask more questions instead of just telling people because it's hard not to. You, you get you you get that fire in you, and you get excited, and and you see everything clearly. And like I said last week, uh, I I was I was angry um, because. Not only was I angry at what had happened, I was angry that I had allowed it to happen. And the, the inward anger was actually worse than the outward anger. And I'm always, you know, most a little of bit of projection. Well, yeah. Well, most people, well, I was going to say most people, you know, will we'll use, we'll, we'll use the line, you know, you're, you're, you are your own worst critic. Um, that's the way it's supposed to be. And I take that to heart in the worst, <laughs> in the worst times. And, and that's what it, you know, for me, that's what it was. I was just angry, and I and I wanted to get that anger out. I wanted to tell everybody, and uh, it's it's not it's it's not the greatest approach. Like, like I said last week, some people it will work on. I've met I've met people uh, where it actually does. Like they need that slap across the face almost to, to start seeing the, the and making the connections. But on the whole, it, it's a lot easier if you can ease people into it and and get them to come to these uh, realizations on their own, which is why I now I've, I've scaled back a lot. Now I try to ask a lot more questions and well, we'll, you know, we'll hold, hold off on that. Cause we're going to, we're going to go in into tips about this later. Okay. Um, but uh, is that, is that all about all you had to say on, on some of the missteps you had early? Yeah. Well, like, yeah, like I said, I, I came to that. I, after I, after I, people stopped talking to me. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, re- I realized that most. Did you have a lot of people quit talking to you, Danilo? <laughs> I can't imagine it with that. I never, I never really patch. had many friends. So. <laughs> <laughs> I no. can't imagine it. Just people just wanting to just, just maybe get a little twist. <laughs> no, but anyways, go ahead. So uh, I think the biggest mistake that I made was voting for Obama, two thousand eight. <laughs> Which obviously, I just I- don't even want to hear you say it again. It's- <laughs> Man, two episodes. Yeah. It, two episodes. The, the it. inner Rush Limbaugh in me is killing me. It's, I, it's. He's he's crying on his knees, going, "Danilo!" I participated in the subjugation of my neighbor uh, unwillingly, and uh, <laughs> you know the road. The road to hell is paved with good intentions, right? So it's very very unfortunate. But um, you know, I find it interesting. Uh, you know, all the books that we read, and you know, most most volunteers I find read a lot. You know, like, like you don't, you don't really meet too many people that are like, you know, I just, I'm an anarchist, you know, I never really read anything. <laughs> no, there's not too many people like that. You know, maybe um, now, uh, like with the internet videos, people, you know, they learn about stuff through videos, but, but a lot of volunteers are well read, right? And what really amazes me is when, when I talk to somebody and then they just, they just throw out like a, like an argument, like they think they, they won, like, like, you don't think there should be rules? <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, like you know, all the things that we read, you know, we never considered that there should be rules. <laughs> you, know? you know, it's 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 very strange how no, that I happens. Like, bombing. they make they make the first um, you know assumption that comes to their mind, and and you know, I, I think a, a little bit of humility about you know where somebody is coming from is in order because that's what people are lacking. Like, 
like you know even us we read all these books but we're always thirsting for more right we we understand that we don't there's a lot we don't know and we're and and you know there's there's always much to learn so so um so yeah like like jeremy said i i try to uh engage the person you know you you attract more more flies with honey than with vinegar right so <laughs> you got to speak smoothly and gently to people and just ask questions you know like you know i like i get into it's, it's amazing my my brother, when I go with uh, my brother's twenty three, and we go sometimes to the to the grocery store, and he's amazed that before, like I'm on the cashier line, and and the woman is checking out my groceries, and by the time like I'm done, I've, I already started talking about the Federal Reserve, inflation, quantitative easing, <laughs> and then he just afterwards he's like, "How did you do that? Like, who talks about that stuff at the cashier line?" <laughs> You know, does but, that turn does that turn people off though, or are you actually no, getting a response I, from I that? I get people or? thinking like like I, like this one time I was so effective that um, by the end, by the time she finished ringing me up, like she was interested in my website and my blog, and I could have gotten her her email like to include me on my on my emailing list to send her <laughs> my articles. <laughs> like like you know, I'm getting pretty good at talking to people. I mean. Um, and I mean, I, I guess I've, I've never had a problem talking to people, you know. You've uh, never like uh, because, said anything that you're like, oh, because I shouldn't I'm, have said that. I'm not I'm, being a good because, steward. Because I'm not, I'm not really like a confrontational guy. Never, I've never been like that. I always, you know, you know, my, 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 um, my, my uh, experience in stand-up comedy, um, I think that really helped a lot with my social skills, you know, so, you know, helps because when you make people laugh, right, you, you tear down their defenses and they mm -hmm. feel much more comfortable with you. And then you can basically say anything, and they're very receptive, right? You're not you're not attacking them, right? You're not uh, putting them on the defensive, and people appreciate that, right? So, so that's what I try to do. With that. So anybody I talk to, you know, crack jokes, make them laugh, and then tell them your truths. <laughs> well, but what were you? Was there anything? Was there any kind of phase where you went through where you just were like walking up to people and like just trying to cram it down their throat and you were sensing that response that they were getting you're like well why isn't this working were you were you cognitively examining your situations or, or were you were you looking at things like how could have i handled that differently okay or, so 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 um when let's see uh, maybe like starting like five years ago i started a um like i was emailing um you know, documentaries, videos that I thought that were interesting, and you know, I'd write like a paragraph or two, and I would email them out. And when I first started this thing, I included my entire family: my grandparents, my parents, my cousins, my uncles, my aunts, everybody, right? And then, as as my writing began to be more inflammatory, right, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and uh, how do you say, just fiery. Um, I got, I was getting signals from my family that they weren't appreciative of what I was saying. And I was getting complaints from my family members, so so eventually I just decided to take all of my family off. I wiped them all off, and I only kept on anybody who actually wanted to continue, you know, listening or reading my stuff. And then and so now it's just mainly composed of people that I talk to, engage, and then you know if they want to hear more, then I include them on my emailing list. So so if anything, those are the people that I like tried to cram down <laughs> their throats. <laughs> it was my family members. Um, but not really like people around. Because me, the, it, it, like you said earlier, the the road to hell is paved with good intentions. You know, those are the people you care about the most in this entire world. So you were trying to throw them that proverbial life jacket, right? They're drowning, and you're trying to throw that, and you're realizing that they don't see that they're drowning. Yeah, yeah. So you've got to find a way to coax them into seeing that. Hey, you might want to grab onto this life jacket, right, Jeremy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you know that that you got it. takes a while to get that. Uh, at least for me, it took that while to get that balance. Uh, most, like I said, most uh, even to, to today, most of my family won't engage with me. Um, and if they do, it's like a, it's, it's only on social media, and it'll be like a little hit and run piece where they'll jump in and and say one thing about something I've posted and then won't respond to me when I take the time to, to write a nice, <laughs> yeah. you know, couple paragraph response to them about why I feel the way I feel and, and my reasons for it. Uh, and then I don't hear back from them. You, you just uh, hate, poor, only, you, you just hate poor people, Jeremy. You just, you yeah. Just, yeah. yeah. The kids. You just, you just, um, you just want or, everyone or to no, starve, man. What about the kids? <laughs> yeah. The, ki the kids. Fascist. Stop yeah, thinking about your own kids for once. All right. You know, you're, you're, you're akin to Hitler. <laughs> But it, the only well for me the only exception now is is my dad I I've, I've actually gotten him on board. That uh, is really that that warms my heart. 
awesome. That is awesome. Well, my dad me, will not talk to me about this stuff. Well, to me, to me, it's a major accomplishment because he's actually he's the one who who inadvertently started me on this path uh, shortly after my kids were born, and <laughs> because he was so anti Obama because he's a hardcore Tea Party constitutionalist oh. uh, and was you know. Obama's a Muslim, like he's like he's like that far, like you know, like the, Kenya, the Kenya thing. Um, sounds like my dad. He started. Your dad and my just, dad would be best friends. Well, he just he started he started email bombing me. Oh um, lord! With, with all the like, he just started deciding one day he wasn't going to hold back anymore. He started bombarding me with all the stuff, like read this, read this, read this, and uh, it was right before the 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 first the first Obama election, and. Um, you know, trying anything in his power to get me to not vote for Obama. <laughs> um, and I finally started, this, I waited like a year and then I finally decided to start listening to him and started going back and reading some of the emails. And that's when I, that's when my transition started from like, like I said last week, I went from like, you know, the, no, the, the low info demo, you know, the low info liberal to a little slightly more knowledgeable but basically no info Republican, <laughs> but that's what started me on the path. Cause I went to conservatism and then I went to the tea party with him. And, but I kept reading as you were, as you were saying before about how, you know, voluntarists and people uh, akin to that tend to read a lot more. And I was one of those people and I just started reading and reading. And I got to a point that I out, outpaced him at one point and started giving him stuff that he had never heard of and he had never considered. Uh, but now after when I finally made this, when I finally, uh, made the jump. Uh, uh, he thought I was a little nutty, but in the past year or so, I've gotten him to the point where now he's sending me stuff and asking me questions and going, "Wow, wow!" You know, he's he's actually at the once point you get someone in the question phase, isn't it so beautiful? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's well, that's a, the goal is to get them into the. Uh, that's wait a I, second, maybe I'm not right about this. That's where my brother's yeah. in right now. My my 23 year old brother. He's asking oh, me that's, questions like that. That's beautiful. See, it's, it's it's great when you do that, and that's that. Those are the success stories. They're few and far between, but. They, like I said, with my dad, it, 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 it's a big deal to me to get him to come around on this. And he's actually where I was towards the end because the last, he's pretty much hung up on the military. And I just recently – Buy him a copy of For a New Liberty and make him read it. Buy well, I did I, I, I did. I ordered it for his Kindle. <laughs> but I also actually I also actually sent him multiple links to Chaos Theory. I'm like, just just read this. Just, just read this and come back to me and tell me I, what you I, think. I got to read that one too. <laughs> I haven't read that one either, and I love Robert Murphy. He wrote, uh, "But won't the world warlords take over?" Yeah. But um, so how about I you, just Dave? wanted, to, I just wanted to touch on, on 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 kind of my transition. You know, like I said in the last episode, I was really done with politics. Kind of, my minarchist phase was about a week long, <laughs> literally. Um, uh, luckily, I just. Happened to listen to Four New Liberty and that squashed everything. Um, it is the red pill, in my opinion. It, for for me, at least, I think that's all on an individual level. But when I first got into it and, and accepted everything and really grasped the message to some extent, not like I am now, I just wanted to tell everyone I know. I, I you know I used to flood my Facebook up like uh, somebody who's one of those Obama Muslim you know people or or you know guns are going to kill everybody people and. It, 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 and, and some of my friends really rejected that, and people I would meet or friends I would talk to, parents, uh, and, and you can't walk up to somebody and hit them over a head with a shovel and, and expect them to say, you know what, that was a good thing to do. <laughs> and, and I feel Free like, too, yeah, that's, <laughs> I believe that's what too many people do once they first step into this uh, philosophy, and. I I'm guilty as charged. I, I thankfully it didn't last long, and I've have t- apologized to a lot of my friends if I've you know uh, been too forward or or anything. But it, you know I tell them, look, if you have any questions or if you think I'm a crazy nut, I'm the same guy. Um, if you, th- I just don't believe that. I just believe that every human interaction should be voluntary. I mean, that's the only difference between me and you right now as a person. And that's my biggest thing now is conveying that to people. Not all this, well, you're a sheep, uh, you know, uh, cops are fascists. All, the, all uh, No, duh, they're fascists. They work for the government. So you're stating rhetorical. You're, you're, you're trying to use words to incite a reaction. You're trolling. You're not, you're not planting seeds. And that's, that's where I want to, to go with this next point is, is, 
is maybe talk about some of your success stories about how you've not underhandedly but correctly conveyed the messages to help better people or help people better associate that with real human intent and not this you're not some just crazy person you know you're you're, you're really trying to give them something that you wholeheartedly believe and this isn't a phase this isn't some kind of flyby belief this isn't like somebody who's like i'm a pats fan no no i'm a, a raiders fan no 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 this isn't a bandwagon thing this is you accept this and you want to tell everybody about it but we've got to channel that incorrect uh, correctly and 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 narrow down the message one of the best people i've seen ever do it is cal mullinette or whatever yeah yeah he, yeah uh, uh Monet or whatever he yeah. he he has a simple message when he's talking to people that have never heard the philosophy before and he's toned it down he's not using big words like sophistry he's not using words like fascist he's not using trigger words mm-hmm. uh, i hate to use that phrase because i hate it words are words um but he's not using words to incite um a backlash where people want to build a wall mm-hmm. and hide behind that belief and i think we touched on that last episode as well is you don't want to be so aggressive that people have to defend themselves. What you want to do is get them into that questioning phase. Get them to where they're actually curious about what you believe in. Would you not agree, Danilo? Or, uh, uh, and, and I'm passing the torch to you to say uh, maybe you could go on and say some of the things that you've, you've done to accomplish this feat. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, well, well, we should probably uh, wrap it up. We're on an hour and ten minutes, but um – We'll, but, we'll we'll do it after Jeremy Jeremy talks for a minute, sure. and then we'll we'll we'll, we'll say our buys. Sure, sure. So, so my my success stories, I would say, would be um, when I was working as an acupuncturist in a no fault car accident clinic. I had exposure to a lot of people, like would come in and out, you know, just uh, always with their new cases and everything. And so, I I would carefully gauge. A, a patient, you know, as they would be coming in, I would ca- gauge them with certain questions to determine if if their mind was open, right, and receptive to receiving this kind of stuff. Because <laughs> it's dangerous if you like just you know surprise somebody with these things, you know. So I gauge people very carefully, and then once I discover like this this person is interested, this person is inquisitive, right? Then I I you know I go with, and with me, one of my favorite ways to introduce the topics of volunteerism is to start with the monetary system right because money is what we all use everybody's familiar with you know everybody uses dollar bills but the problem is nobody or very few people take the time to understand what exactly is written on the dollar bill and what that signifies right you have <laughs> the top it says federal reserve note right then it says Dollar bill, right? So what does that mean? What does Federal Reserve note mean? And then I go into, what is the Federal Reserve? Do you know what the Federal Reserve is? And most people say, no, I have no idea. Like, like, <laughs> then I go into that. What does note? What does note mean? Do you, you have any idea what that? So it's a basic, I'm educating them on that. You know, what is, you know, dollar, you know, before 19, uh, you know, before 1913, one dollar um, or, or one, one, um, one dollar equaled 120th of an ounce of gold. And they're like, what? Are you serious? <laughs> you know, so I, 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 I like to educate people on economics, you know, it's, or, you know, uh, specifically the monetary system. It's fascinating. And, and like, you know, I take, you know, like, say, one, $1 it, it takes roughly, you know, to print and with the ink and paper and then transportation, roughly six cents, right? $1. That's the, that's the cost it made to me, $1, right? And I say, how much do you think it, it costs to print, transport a uh, $100 bill? And they're like, oh, I don't know. Like seven cents, you know why? Because it's an extra zero, it's a little more ink, right? <laughs> and then they're like, "What? That's it?" <laughs> like, yeah, it's just paper. It's just paper and ink with dead with dead people on it, right? That means more specifically, dead, 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 dead fascists, <laughs> dead mass murderers, but you know, dead people that people have been idolizing, right? And then, and that I think that gets people jarred. Like, wait a minute, what? <laughs> So I think that's one of my those are good points. One of my ways that I that I use I use the monetary system. I think that that's um, it's a neutral topic because you know when you, once you start talking about I guess um, immigration or um, you know foreign policy, people have you know they have their um, 
uh, you know, they have their points, their perspectives, and, and they're biased already. But when you talk about the monetary system, like you, you're gonna you're gonna be lucky if you meet one person that knows much about the Federal Reserve at all. You know, <laughs> so that's my thing. I love I love talking about the Federal Reserve. <laughs> what about you, Jeremy? Um, well, I, I didn't mean to step on your point, Dave, by telling the story about my dad early because I didn't. No, know. I, I, I thoroughly enjoyed <laughs> your your dad's no, story. No, 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 no. It gives me it gives me hope. I, I think I should. Oh, like, no, uh, he's 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 my biggest he's my biggest success story to date. Um, but basically. You know how I got to him uh, is it, it, it's the change in my attitude and the change in, in my how I was evangelizing um, overall just he picked up on uh, where some others had already either given up and didn't want to come back or uh, others are still on the fence um, but I you know what I was saying before about how I was very in your face and, and, and just posting things and screaming at people and calling names um, you know, I do a lot of my outreach on social media just because it's my business. I'm out, you know, you know, like I, I'm out walking. I think I said last week I'm out walking dogs six to ten hours a day, uh, you know, between walking and driving and, and running into people and stuff uh, or not running into people that often. So the only time I have to talk to people, even my family <laughs> or my friends is online. Uh, so I do a lot of my outreach there and I just switch, you know, I just switched it up and I, I still I, I pick uh, information sometimes that had less inflammatory headlines, uh, but I also stopped. Uh, I, I stopped giving my own opinion on it, other than uh, interesting read, check it out. You know, rather than t telling people you have to read this because you're a sheep if you don't and stuff like that. Uh, and my dad actually just unbeknownst to me started reading this stuff, and then he started coming to me. Um, or whenever I would talk to him, I just instead of telling him things, I would ask him questions and. That, that's really all it is. You know, Danilo, you were saying, you go with the monetary system. Um, my thing is I, I just try to gauge everybody and, and find, you know, I said last week, you got to find that in. Um, everybody has a different one. Uh, you know, there's something that is, is super important to one person and is not important at all to another. So if you talk to people a little bit and you find out what they're interested in and, and what, what bothers them in general, or if they just come out and say it, that's when you, you know, Dill, I think that's what you're saying before about when you're out in public. I, I think we've talked about this previously where you just, you know, you hear that one thing and somebody starts complaining about something. And if you have some knowledge on it, that's a perfect place to just jump in and, you know, just try not to be pushy, just give an opinion or ask a question and back off a little bit and see what they say and see where they go. And that's, that's my whole thing now is I, I'm really trying to lead people to it rather than, beat them over the head with it because as we've, we've already discussed that doesn't work um and in the end that's what actually worked for me was you know the, the guy i spoke about last week who, who was the first one to use the term voluntarist with me um you know he didn't force feed me anything he didn't try to convince me he just always asked questions and just kind of threw stuff out there and and see where i took it and i, I that I, you know i came to the conclusions on my own and that's i think that's important for everybody so like I said, my, my dad's the, the one success I have now. Still working on my wife. Um, I think she's getting, I think she's getting closer. She doesn't you, think I'm as crazy. She doesn't think I'm as crazy. At least not there. For, at least not for this reason anymore. I think she still thinks I'm crazy, but for different reasons. <laughs> she, she trusts she trusted you enough to uh, father her children. So well, I, I didn't make I didn't I didn't make the change until I didn't make the change um, until after the kids were born. So that she well, still I, she, I, she, I, she you're still the same person. That's this the, yeah. the whole point of this thing is we're not well, crazies. Well, to an extent, it, it it does change you though when you start making these connections and you realize you know you, you, you can't. It, it's almost impossible not to have it change you um, in some dramatic way because it, it in a lot of cases it, it throws your world completely upside down. Almost oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, because almost you're, you're, everything you know, it's a yeah. lie. Cause, yeah, because you're not you're not just paying taxes now, but you're supporting you know foreign occupations, um, <laughs> invasions, right? You're supporting you subjugation know, well, of your welfare, neighbors. subjugation of yeah. That's what you're supporting yeah. with taxes. It's, it's not just paying your taxes, sending a check, and that's it, right? You un we understand yeah. where that money goes, right? yeah. and what it's used for. So it yeah, so yeah, so that's a, that's that's the point I was trying to. That's basically what I was trying to say, though. Is just it, it has to change you to some extent. So it has, but she'll come around hopefully. At the very least, I got the kids to work with. I can try to mold them. Yeah, <laughs> they're still young enough. Hopefully, uh, they'll, they'll just be the next. They'll be the next line of defense. <laughs> um, 
I, I, don't, I don't really have a success story to talk about, but I really, I, I, I well, recently uh, one of the guys that's been working on uh, the construction uh, job I've been doing, um, I've got him completely understanding of a lot of the philosophy, uh, gave him a copy of Freedom uh, by uh, Adam Kokesh, and he read it on his plane ride back to uh, where he lives. And uh, when he got back, because he, he had to fly home to do some stuff, and then he came back the, the, like two days later, and he was telling me, you know, he got about halfway through the book, and he is really seeing some eye-opening stuff, like stuff he's never thought of. And, you know, I just got him into the question phase, you know, very easily and very nonchalantly. You know, we were talking, and, you know, he was uh, – he's from Colorado, and he was, you know, wor he's working in, in Alabama – and, you know, he said, I think it's ridiculous that weed's not legal here. And, you know, I just said, well, why do you think it's ridiculous? You know, and I just built upon that. You know, I was like, well, you know, I don't really think that any government command is legitimate. And here's why. And he like it was like a it was like a screwdriver tightening his head. He was like, what? And then he was like, holy shit, I agree with everything you just said. And then we talked about cops. We talked about this. We talked about public parks. We talked about all of this for hours. Um, while we were, you know, had stuff to wait on, you know, pe waiting on people to do, uh, get us stuff, uh, you know, just talking it. But, uh, another, uh, I got somebody to completely stop dead in their tracks the other day on Twitter. I, I post about it in the group. Um, and they messaged, they DM'd me. I don't want to say who it was. Um, I don't want to put them on blast or anything, but they DM'd me this, this individual and, um, they, uh, cause apparently I guess they didn't want to publicly say it, but you know, I, we were talking back and forth and then boom, he just, I, he contradicted himself and I called him on it and I just very nicely called him on it. I didn't be like, well, don't you see you're a fucking idiot? Like I, 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 I said, well, you know, how am I not right in this situation? And he just, he didn't say anything after that. And like a day later he was like, Hey, do you have any literature I can read to better understand your point? And nice. like, I, I did a little dance. I thought he was going to block me and, and move on and, and continue with his day and push me off as an afterthought. Yeah. And, you know, I, I just said, look, how much time do you have to read? And he, he – not a lot. And I said, well, check out this audio book if you got time. Listen to it while you work out. And uh, I'm waiting on him to say something back. But, uh, you know, the biggest thing you can do, guys, is not push people. Just plant the seed and walk away if the – if the plant doesn't grow, oh well. Mm -hmm. But you're going to get more success trying to – if you – you're not going to burn someone's ideal ca – idea castles down with fire. They're made of stone. They've been in there their whole life. They've been built upon lies, built upon lies, lies, built upon lies, blah, 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 all the way up. You're not going to burn that down. You have to show them why they're wrong in the nicest way possible. You almost have to be a salesman, um, and that's that's one of my biggest successes is just getting people to realize. Wait a second, I might be wrong here, and that's very hard to get people to do is to admit that you're wrong because no one wants to do it. You know what I'm saying? If I told you you were wrong about that soul patch, you'd probably fucking go crazy. You, you would defend <laughs> it to the death. That's but it. You're not wrong about it because it's fantabulous. <laughs> so. But you, you see what I'm saying? Like, there's two ways to, to, to scramble an egg here, you know? And one way's the, the preferable way, and one way's the uh, rush job. And you can't rush things like completely changing an ideology that's been beaten into someone's head their whole life. And you always have to keep into consideration how you became a liberty uh, uh, supporter, how you became an advocate of individual. I, I hate to say the word individual anarchy and and you have to realize that not everyone is going to, you know, chop a tree down the same way. You have to find out what worked for you, refine that and translate it. That's it. Translate it into what they're going to be able to accept. And uh, if we want to close down, is there any any tips, like straight out, just flat out thing that you would want to say if you had someone, like if you could pick somebody, especially in our groups, that is um, 
don't say their name, but if you wanted to pick someone and just say, hey, try this instead of that. Try Try a different method instead of, you know, what, what's the saying? Insanity is doing the same thing, expecting a different result. Mm-hmm. You know, what would, what would you, what advice would you give to someone, uh, stranger A will say, what would you say to stranger A that's doing what you have seen fail in the past, Jeremy? Um, well, that, that would really just be going over my points again. <laughs> no, no, no. Like what, what something no, no, it's quick. Really, it's really, it's really, I was just going to say, it's really, that, that's, that's simply, you know, the, the best advice I could personally give is just, is, is ask questions instead. And, and, oh, never, you know, even if you have to respond to a question with a question sometimes just to get the ball rolling. Um, but as far as like the overall advice for this particular topic, uh, the, the biggest thing to me that I've, you know, to kind of echo what you were saying uh, a little bit about, uh, you know, just plant, planting the seeds. Uh, my my thing now is when I do engage on social media, uh, especially because, like I said, you have you have a bigger audience there than, than you're going to get in person most of the time, unless somebody's paying you for a speaking engagement, which I, I don't think any of us are currently uh, scheduled getting, debates in public. <laughs> I, I, I don't think we're getting any offers at the moment. So, so places like social media are the, are the best app that we have for things like this. Uh, but the one thing that I, I I've learned is that it's it's almost never the person you're talking to or, or typing to or, or, or whatever the medium you're using uh, that's the most important. And that's how I try to treat most people if I decide to engage in a, in a debate on some page or, or in some group. Um, or even if somebody comes onto my wall and decides to uh, to to start at, you know saying something, or even even if they're being derogatory, um, I'll, I'll try to engage them. And a lot of the times, if I keep going, they they'll think they're winning. Uh, but I'm only I'm not I'm not interested in trying to convert that. I'm not, yeah I'm not I'm, well I'm not interested in trying to convert them. You know, nine times out of ten, my target audience is the people that I know. And I've learned this, actually, because a couple of my family members have actually finally come up to me and told me that they don't comment on anything that I post, but they read everything. So my my target audience is the people that I know I are out things like that too. reading silently and not saying anything. So I try to keep my cool in all situations, you know, in, in almost all situations uh, and, and just continue to keep dropping the logical points and asking questions. And it's, it's, I, I actually look forward to when people go a little crazy and start throwing around the ad hums and stuff like that, because it just makes it easier to make my point. Uh, you know, so that's, for, I guess that would be the second point is just, is don't engage in those silly battles. You know, the, the ad hum wars that go on and stuff like that, whether it's in person or, or, or on the computer or whatever. It, it's not worth it. It's just, you're most of the time you're giving the person, the other person what they want. Uh, and and it's not you just end up looking badly, especially if there's a crowd again, whether it's a cyber crowd or or a real crowd, uh, you, you end up making yourself look worse in that situation. So so you're saying like politely dig that hole and let them bury or hand them the shovel and let them bury themselves essentially. Like yeah, like <laughs> that's that's a good way to look at it. You know, like well, it's, yeah, put, put, <laughs> let them put themselves on display, and all you're doing is pointing out that. You have contradictions here, and you don't realize them. So, but so someone that, reading it that's not in that furious back and forth might say, "Jeremy's blowing this out. Like he is completely right about all of this, and this guy's burying himself. He looks like an idiot because it's hard to realize that you're advocating violence when that's what you've taught been taught is right your whole life." Yeah, no, exactly. And I've, I've had people come to me a couple of days after the fact, after some of those things, and, and actually have said to me, yeah, I know, I read that, and I, I totally see what you're saying. I've actually had the people that were flipping out on me, and you know, on one or two occasions, come back a couple of days later, and then want to ask questions, because they calmed down, <laughs> and went back and read the whole thing, and was like, and were like, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> they, they actually started checking their premises. So, uh, so yeah, that, like I said, <laughs> never... Don't don't think anything you're doing is a waste. You know, that there's always another audience out there that you don't really that you don't really pay attention to. That, uh, oh yeah, you that never know who's watching. Could be learning if you're just dropping the seeds and, and, and trying to move on. So Danilo, what are some of your hot tips? What's Danilo's? What's Mr. Cuellar's hot tips for for gaining more advocates of liberty? All right, so I guess I'll I'll finish up uh, this episode with. Uh, well, first of all, um, 
a quote from Socrates. Uh, he, he said the, the first person to engage in insults lost the debate. Mm -hmm. Right, because oh, correct. Yeah. because that's an act of desperation. Right, you have no more logical arguments at your disposal. So then you're a racist, you're a bigot, you're a sexist, you're you hate the poor, whatever it is. Right, right. It's it, yeah. it, it, it's just name calling at that point, and 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 the conversation is over basically. But um, I think I think the um, the seeds analogy is really a wonderful analogy because you know if you think about plants and seeds, like you can't force a plant to grow. <laughs> right, right. You have to provide. Grow, damn you! Grow. <laughs> you have to provide the you know the perfect surroundings for it. yeah you know the perfect ratio of surroundings. You know, too much water it drowns. Too little die. You know, it, it desiccates. Right. So, so there has to be the perfect ratio, and um, and I think it's similarly you know you know same thing with you know public education. Right. You, you can't force a child to learn something. Right. Um, they're going to either want to learn it or. Or not learn it, <laughs> and you can't force it either way. Um, so, and you can't call that education either. That's why it's, that's why it's called indoctrination. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, the, it's it's you know very true what you said, Jeremy. That uh, you know when, when you debate with people online, especially you know you do it not so much for the person but for the people watching, and that's that's the true value is um, is other people because you really never know where your influence will lead you know and that's why i love posting stuff on youtube because you know you have no idea who's watching your stuff on youtube right mm -hmm. um so that's really is awesome you know youtube has, has done so much i mean internet in general but youtube has done so much to just spread ideas lightning fast like and it's so funny when i hear people say um <laughs> like you know, you shouldn't. You've been watching. You've been looking at the internet too much. Don't don't believe everything you see on the internet. Like, so does that mean that you believe everything you see on TV? Like, <laughs> yeah. You know, like that doesn't that doesn't make sense. Like, of course, there's going to be people you know uh, espousing different perspectives, and that's great. That's wonderful, right? It's called the free market. It's called where people, you know, ideas are are um, you know thrown around all over the place, and that means that you have to critically analyze and think and research, and not believe. Um, you know, at the first reading, right? You have to do your own research, and it's not a substitute for thinking, for critical thought, right? So, so yeah, the internet has just been a savior, and I think is is catapulting uh, the uh, the uh, intelligence of humanity and and helping us to realize that much quicker the uh, illegitimacy of government and the state. So. So I think uh, that would wrap it up for this episode of Seeds of Liberty podcast. Thank you very much for watching. This is um, Danilo from Peace Finicism, Dave, and Plant Jer Seeds. And Don't Jeremy. start fires. <laughs> Plant Seeds and read Rothbard, right? Yeah. <laughs> awesome. As always. Read. <laughs> that's Re read. Or just read. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> well, uh, thank you very much. So um, we'll continue this hopefully next week. Take care. All right. Bye. Guys. Bye. Peace.